it's me, Abigail, and today I'm going to show you how to make one of these really cool lanyards. I really like these because I really like the design and feel of them. Like, it's like really cool, so I'm going to teach you how to make these. Um, first, you will need um, at least two um, lanyard strings. For me, I really like Rex Lace. To me, it's the best brand. And I have four, but all you really need is two. You could have... Well, you can even have one, but I really like using two colors because one color will look kind of like this. It'll kind of look a little weird, but I also like that one. And um, also, um, Lanyard could also make things like these, like some square Lanyards and circle ones. And I'm the next thing you will need is some tape, and scissors and you don't need that much tape but I like to use a lot so that way it stays down and let's get started so the colors I'm going to use are um pink and yellow I really like those colors together and um I am going I don't need scissors for cutting this but we will need scissors at the end and um for the base color that's gonna be the one at the bottom like under so in this one the base color is green because green is under and the pink um circles it on top so i am going to use yellow for the bottom but I also don't want mine to be that long, so you could always cut the ends off if you make it too long by accident. And next, I'm going to use pink. What you want to do with the yellow is you kind of want to put the ends together and then hold it like this. And then when you cut the pink, you want it to be a little longer. Sometimes I use the tape to hold it down And then another one of the lanyards. And then I'll measure so I can make the pink a little longer out of that. So what you want to do now is you want to take the top of the yellow, the one where the ends are on the opposite, this one the curved side, then you're going to take one of the ends on the other color, and um, I'm going to make a knot on the top. You could also do this knot at the end, but I like to do it in the beginning so it's, e a, little, so it's a little easier to um, tape. Then you're kind of going to put the pink to one side, take the tape, and then tape it down on the surface that you are going to be using. Then you want to make sure that when you tape the bottom of the other color, hold on, let me finish taping the top. So I'm going to start telling you about the bottom. On the bottom with the yellow, you don't want to tape the pink on the bottom, but on the yellow, you want to make sure that they're flat the whole time and they have no twists on them. So that way it won't twist inside the pink and then it'll look perfectly flat like the others. Okay, so now when you have the two parts of the yellow and the one part of the pink, you're going to take one side of the pink and you're going to um, find the opposite side on the yellow. You're going to put it over the side closest to the pink and under the side farthest from the pink. Then you want to make sure that there are no crosses in the pink either. So that way it's still flat. And then you're going to do the opposite. You're going to put it 
over the side that's closest to the pink and under the side that's farthest from the pink. Well, you might have different colors, so you always want to make sure that the color that is not taped at the bottom, for me that one is the pink, it might be blue for you, and you're going to um, have that side go over the um, other part that is closest to it and under the side that is farthest from it. It might be a little easier for you to use the same colors as me, so that way you know what I'm talking about, because I'm going to be talking about yellow and pink. And um, the yellow is the base color, and then the pink is the outside color. And the outside color is the one that goes over and under the sides. And then you just want, then you just want to keep going. And for me, something that helps me is by lifting it up. And also, when you put it over and under, you want to hold it as you pull. You want to hold it closer to the, towards the top. So that way, when you um, do it, that it stays close together. And when you tie it, it won't look really loose. And I'll show you a little example at the end how it would look when it looks loose. Actually, I'll show you now an example of what it looks like when it looks loose. So I'm just going to grab a little color of the blue real quick. And then I'll use the green. So let's say it's like this. Whoa, the blue's a lot longer this time. Because I didn't measure this time. That's why you always have to measure so that way it's the same length. I'm going to tie the little knot like I did on this one. So when it looks loose, you basically do it without holding on, which is a little weird for me. And then it'll just look really, really, really weird. I'm gonna do it right now. And it would finish a lot quicker which is not good, you always want to take your time. So that way you're able to hold it and everything. Okay, so when it's loose, it'll basically look like this. And this is not what you want. You want it to look like this. So I do not think those look the same. To you, I don't think they look the same either. So you do not want to hold it loose because this is loose. This is what you want, so that way it's tight.
Okay, now let's keep going on this. And like I was saying, you want to hold it um, really tight. As you pull, you hold it tight. Then you let go really quickly. And then with the other hand, hold it tight. Um, sometimes, since I am a righty, sometimes it might feel a little weird um, doing it with your other hand. But um, if you do it with the same hand, you're just basically going to be doing this. Hold on, let me show you. You're going to be flipping your hand over and under like this. And I don't want to be doing that, so I like to use both of my hands. I mean, you could use one of your hands, but both of your hands is a lot easier. And also, when you um, put the pink over, you want, so you see how this is like this, and there's no twist. You want to make sure there's no twist. And when you go over, you flip it over. You don't want to do this. You flip it over, and then go over and under and hold. And if you do get a twist, let me show you an example of getting a twist. Oh, that was pretty good, actually. So I'm going to make it um, twisted. It came out like that. Okay, so here is what you do when it's twisted. How is that not twisted? Okay, hold on. Let me make it twisted. Oh my god, I'm so used to doing it right that, oh, okay, I got it, I got it. Oh, this is so weird. Okay, so, I still did it right, okay, let me do this. Okay, so now I have a twist. You see on the back here, it is twisted. What you wanna do is you wanna take that one loop out, then make sure it's flat, no twists, then put it over and under again. And remember that you always want it to go over the closest one to it. So right now, the closest one to the outside um, string the outside lanyard, sorry, that might be blocking you. So the closest one to the outside color is this one. So that means it's gonna go over this one, and then it's gonna go under this one, so over and under. And then, now, since it's on this side, the closest color to it is, I mean, the closest color to the outside color, the closest side is this one. So then it goes over that one instead of this one now, and it goes under this. And then, like I said, you want to keep repeating that. And if it gets a little tricky, you could always pause this video and um, do it slower, maybe, because I have been doing this for a long time. And maybe I go a little too fast. Sorry. Because, like, if I slow down, then I might get it wrong. Because, like, you know how sometimes when you do something really fast, um, you do everything right, but then when you do it really slow, you do everything wrong. Yeah, so I like to do it pretty fast sometimes. Like this. I just keep going and going and going and going. And today, I was trying to make a long one which I did not finish like not like long like this like long long like I would estimate it as like 10 feet long and um I only got like a quarter of a quarter of a quarter of a quarter of a quarter.
Eastern. And yeah, so I will show you guys my long one after. And I would also show you guys when I finish this one, I will show you how to finish it up, how to tie it at the bottom. And yeah, so I'm just gonna finish this really quickly and you guys can watch. And after this, I will also show you, well, not after this, but I'm going to make a video after this on how to fix mistakes. So that way, if I did this, like, if I did this too fast and you guys got twists and you forgot how to fix the twists, um, you could either go back or you could watch my next video after this that I'm making. It'll show how to fix twists in the base color, how to fix twists on the outside color. And it'll also show you, like, if you get one loop bigger than the others, like, let's say this loop is, like, really big. Like, maybe not this big, but, like, bigger than the others and it's not flat. I'll show you how to fix that in the next video. So you could also watch that video to fix the mistakes in these lanyards. I forgot what these are called. You could probably look them up online. I mean, not online. You could probably look these up on Safari or Google, and it'll probably tell you what they are called, so you could teach your friends about it, maybe. And you see right now I have a twist in the base color. I'm going to turn that around on the inside of the outside color, push it up, and then the twist is basically going to be gone. So you see how my um, pink string, which is my outside color, is getting shorter and shorter as I go? That means that the string is going around the yellow one tight, and that is good. But that also means that you're running out of outside color. And sometimes, maybe, your outside color won't reach the bottom of your base color. You see how my pink, it's probably not going to reach on the very end. So you can always cut that off when you're done and after you tie it under the knot because you don't want to cut above the knot because then it'll just fall apart. And now I'm going to do one more string and you can see that now I cannot go anymore or else it's just going to get shorter and shorter and there's going to be no knot. So now I'm going to take this off, put the tape. I like to put it on the top, maybe you could put it in a trash can or something. Then, you see how, oh, let me fix my twist, okay. So now you see the side that your outside color has ended on. You wanna flip it over the other side, just flip it over, don't even go over and under. Then turn it upside down and make another knot at the bottom. It might be a little hard because it might be a little short. Like the outside color might be a little short and then the base color is probably going to be longer. And that's why I do the strings one at a time. I don't do them all three at the same time. I do them differently in a different order. And when you finish doing this and you're ready to tighten the knot like this, you want to pull down, oh, I lost it, I lost it. Let me fix it real quick. There we go. You want to tighten the knot, you want to pull it down. Sometimes it might be a little loose like that. You see how it's this, and you can pull it down and up and then it looks a little weird. Then. You could either take out the knot or make another one. I like to take out the knot. 
so that way it doesn't like look weird with two knots because you can't cut it above the knot remember and um now i am putting it back in the knot like i showed you and then push down like this and sometimes if you get the design in the knot um, I'll show you how to fix that in the next video too. Then you want to take this off. Get the tape off. And throw it in the trash. And then you want to cut the bottom. Well, you don't have to cut the bottom. I really like to so that way it doesn't look uneven and stuff like that. And there you go.